I'm Nick Sider, field crop entomologist with the University of Illinois. Uh, planting season is approaching, and today I'm talking about the great Calaspis, which is somewhat of a sporadic early season pest of corn and soybean in Illinois. Um, so with great Calaspis, we have an insect that goes through a one-year life cycle. The adults are going to emerge in mid to late June and become active and they will begin feeding on the foliage of several plants, but in particular, they like to feed on legumes, on soybeans and alfalfa and clover and other closely related plants. And during this time, as they're feeding, they'll begin laying their eggs. Now these eggs are going to hatch later in the summer, and the larvae, when they hatch, will begin feeding on the roots, um, again, typically on legume roots. Now this damage, during the late summer is not economic. It's not going to cause a problem to the plant in most cases. And in the fall, as temperatures start to cool, the larvae will work their way down lower into the soil profile. They'll get down below the frost line. And that's where they're going to spend the winter. Uh, so they'll overwinter as a partially grown larva. In the spring, when it begins to warm up, they'll begin working their way back up that soil profile. And once the crop has been planted um, in that field, they'll begin feeding on the roots, beginning with the root hairs, but ultimately they will strip those roots. Now in Illinois, since they're feeding after a legume, um, typically that damage is being done to corn. When that damage begins, the, the first symptom of that damage, it's going to look like a nutrient deficiency because, well, it is a nutrient deficiency. Those plants with damaged root systems are less able to take up the nutrients that they need, and so you get nutrient deficiency symptoms. As time goes on, if this damage is severe enough, you will get death of the plant and ultimately stand loss from this kind of damage. Now, because we rotate most of our corn in Illinois with soybeans, uh, and the eggs are laid in, in soybeans and other legumes, most of the time we see this damage in corn, However, where we have continuous soybean, uh, you can get severe damage to soybean seedlings as well. Uh, it's just less common because most of our soybeans are grown after corn and they're not laying eggs in corn in the same way. In terms of management for this insect, knowing the field history is critical. This is a sporadic pest. We tend to get outbreaks of this insect maybe every 10 to 15 years or so. We had an outbreak like this in 2018. In 2019, we really didn't see that many instances of severe damage from great Calaspis. Uh, but these do come back around in cycles and they tend to attack the same fields and even the same areas of fields over and over again. They tend to like lighter textured soils and they tend to like sort of the well-drained areas of the field so often like you see in this picture, you'll have an area of heavy stand loss, maybe up on the ridge or maybe on the high point of the field where drainage is a little bit better. There are seed treatments and soil insecticides available to control this insect. Unfortunately, because it's so sporadic, we really have limited efficacy data in corn and soybean in Illinois on what the best materials are for grape calaspis. So it's hard to get a good handle on what's really effective for control. Now, unfortunately, because of the nature of this injury, we don't have any rescue treatments available. So once we've lost stand from grape Calaspis, it's simply a matter of making a replant decision, making the determination of whether or not we have enough stand loss to justify replanting all or part of the field. But the key here is to be able to recognize that damage. If you see those nutrient deficiency symptoms, especially if you're seeing them in one spot of the field, where it doesn't make a lot of sense that you would have a nutrient deficiency. Dig up those plants, look through the roots, and you'll find those tiny creamy white larvae if that's what the culprit is. Um, and identifying that soon will help you to recognize whether or not a treatment is needed for this pet.